Hello. The finite differences method is applied to solve various problems in the numerical analysis. In this video, I will explain the basic idea and derivation of the finite differences method and show you with coding examples how to use it in numerical differentiation. First of all, let's start with the basic definition of differentiation from calculus. As you see here, the first derivative of the function f of x with respect to x can be defined as the limit of the difference in the value of the function f of x over x difference, delta x, when delta x approaches zero. In numerical analysis, delta x cannot be infinitesimal because approaching to zero or being infinitesimal is a boundless theoretical assumption applied in analytical solutions. And if we want to quantify this assumption for a numerical solution, we have to define a finite value for the difference. Consequently, the value of the derivative f prime x will be an approximate value. So we can rewrite the delta f of x as the difference between the value of the function at a given x and its value at x plus delta x. This approximation can be written by using more concise and common notation as following. So we get this formula, which represents the approximation of the first derivative, which is known also as forward differences method. The finite differences method can be explained graphically by the following simple steps. First, let's start with the curve of the function f of x. Suppose we need to find the first derivative of the function at the point xi and corresponding f of xi. Theoretically, the value of the derivative is equal to the slope of the tangent line at xi. Our goal now is to construct a line parallel to the tangent by using the given function and known points in order to find its slope. So let's suppose a second point b on the curve at the point xi plus 1. It is obvious from the graph that the line ab has a totally different slope. Now, as a second attempt, let's select a closer point at the middle. As a result, the angle between ab and the tangent has decreased notably, but it is still not small enough to assume an approximate solution. If we move b closer to a, we notice that the angle has been reduced more. So it is clear that as xi plus 1 gets closer to xi, ab will be closer to coincide with the tangent. In conclusion, the smaller the difference h between xi and xi plus 1 is, the more accurate solution we can get. To find the mathematical derivation of the forward finite differences method, we can use Taylor series expansion. By using the notation of the point xi, xi plus 1, and the definition of the difference h, we can get an infinite series which combines the corresponding values of f of x and its derivatives. By solving the equation for f prime x, we have now the formula of the forward finite differences in addition to higher derivative terms. Since the higher terms are multiplied by h, which is a small finite value, and also divided by increasing factorials at the denominators, they can be eliminated from the equation. Finally, we get the forward differences formula plus an estimated error of order of magnitude of h, which is obtained from the largest higher derivative term in the previous step. The derivation of the backward finite differences is similar to that of the forward differences, but by using xi minus x. xi minus x actually is smaller than xi, so consequently it results in negative h. Since h is always set in the finite differences method as a positive quantity, its negative sign is given to the terms that it is multiplied by except when the power of h is an even number. From this point, the remaining steps are the same and the order of the error as well. 
the derivation of the central differences is much easier since it can be considered a combination of both of the forward and backward differences. Accordingly, it can be found by subtracting Taylor's series of the backward differences from the forward differences, which yields this infinite series. We notice here, after solving the equation for f prime xi, that the largest term after the difference is the third derivative term multiplied by h square. Because h in numerical applications is always taken as less than one quantity, like 0 0.5, 0 0.1, and 0 0.001, for example, so the order of h square indicates to much smaller error than the other two differences types. To have a better understanding about the meaning of order of the error, let's compare the graphs of the three types of the finite differences methods. By using the same function curve at the same step size for the same point xi. The forward and backward differences result in almost the same angle between the tangent and the line AB as we see here, which means that they give similar size of error with respect to the size of h. While in central difference, the angle is so small so that the two lines are nearly coincident. This clearly shows that this solution is much more accurate than those of the other methods at the same conditions. The higher derivatives of forward, backward, and central finite differences require more points in the direction of the considered differences. Here we see the first, second, third, and the fourth derivatives of the forward finite differences method. As we see here, the number of the forward x points is equal to the order of the derivatives. The same thing can be seen in the backward differences, but in the opposite direction. In the central differences, we can say that the differences are mirrored about the center. So the order of the forward difference terms in each derivative is equal to the backward ones. In this example, we want to find the first and second derivatives of the polynomial at x.1. Also, we need to compare the accuracy of the solution at different values of step size. Now, before starting the coding, we should know how to represent the notation of xi, xi plus 1 or xi minus 2, for example, in the computer code. For that reason, since we know that the step size h is constant, so we can represent the values of xi by x itself and the values of the next steps in the positive directions by addition the value of h multiplied by the uh, number of steps. The same thing can be done for the negative direction. Now let's begin the solution by defining the function. Now we should define the value of x where we want to calculate the differences, which is given as 0.1, and the value of step size h. Now we can also define the theoretical or analytical values for comparison. Now, let's start by the forward differences approximation. Now, in printing statement or printing function, we will print four quantities. The first de derivative and the error in comparison with the theoretical value, and the second derivative and the, comp and the corresponding error. So it will be like here we 
added the tab operators or the tab descriptors. These are uh, used to output space or like uniform space between the columns uh, of the table. Since we used the same function names here, so we can just copy paste the print statement and go ahead to use the central differences. Now, let's test the uh, code and see if we can get the results as we expect. Now, as we see here, we obtained uh, a nice table, but still it's not so clear for the reader. So uh, let's add a header to the uh, top, above the top row in order to describe each column and add an additional column at the very beginning to show uh, or to explain the uh, results or the uh, type of each row. Now, uh, let's try and see the run of this code. We notice here that we need to um, arrange this table or fix some problems. First of all, we should fix the distances between the uh, header titles. So we can add another tab or other tab uh, specifiers, which can give us more spaces. So as you see here, the header uh, became more uh, consistent with the columns of the table, but we notice that the zeros or the numbers in these columns actually are not consistent to each other because of this minus sign. So we can make a small uh, trick here with the F specifier. So we can add a space between the percentage sign and the F specifier of real numbers, which is used to print real numbers, the, this space actually will create a default space at the beginning of each value, which would be filled by the minus sign if it exists, but if it's not, would be just a space. So let's try to run and see the code as you see here. So now the zeros and columns became more consistent uh, with each other and the title and we had have now a beautiful uh, table now let's analyze the result we see that we have l relatively large error because the accuracy here is only at two digits after the decimal point here the accuracy in the second derivative is less it's even not even first uh, uh, decimal uh, digit. So we need to improve the accuracy. So let's reduce the amount of the value of H by, as given in the example, 2.01 and run the code. So as we see here, we have improved the uh, accuracy in especially in this uh, central uh, differences method. But again, uh, we can have better uh, result by 
smaller value of h let's use the third value 0 0.001 and run the code and as you see here uh, the error has dropped significantly especially in the central finite differences in the last row as we see the error is almost uh, zero up to the uh, sixth uh, decimal digit in the second example we want to know the first and second derivatives of the given polynomial over the domain minus one to one by using the central finite differences method then we need to plot the graphs of the function and its derivatives at h equals to 0 0.01 now in order to code this example we need two modules the first module is from numpy uh, in order to use the uh, numpy arrays because we need to create a uh, vector or an array of values to cover the given domain the second is plotting uh, module which is called pyplot and we name it with the prefix plt now let's define the function let's define the value of h which is equal to 0 0.01 and let's define the vector of x by using the numpy function lin space and we define the domain now the function lin space creates uh, an array one dimensional array and the default value of the number of its elements is 50. we can add a third parameter here for example when if we want to make 100 so that time the number of elements would be uh, 100 now let's stick with the original or let's say default value of 50 and continue to code so central differences according to uh, problem so df of one equals we not use the same statements or the same uh, formula used in the example one with the same way of representing the uh, steps and the elements now in this way the values of dff1 and dff2 will be one dimensional arrays correspondent to the values given or obtained from the function lin space minus 1 to 1 and assigned to x so for these calculations we will not use or even need uh, a loop of four or any kind of uh, loops because the uh, Python uh, will calculate the values of uh, dff1 and dff2 for every element in X now we can plot the curves or the results as following so first let's use the plot function to plot the three curves function its first derivative and its second derivative so we'll be in like pairs f of x and let's it be a continuous line a black line so the continuous black line will represent the function the given function the second pair is the first derivative and 
it could be like dashed lines and blue the color blue and finally the last pair is the second derivative and let's make it dash dot line in red so this is the meaning of this or let's say this is the explanation of this statement now also we uh, add the labels to the axes so this is x label simply we call it x y label So let's add the legend that explains the meaning of each curve. Uh, the legend actually is, or the items of legend are presented by a list, a small list. That's why we use the brackets. So the first item in the list is f of x the second curve is the first derivative and the last item is the second derivative we should Keep in mind that the legend or the sequence in the legend should be should match the sequence in the plot uh, function above. So in this way, the uh, definitions in the legend will be consist consistent with the curves on the plot. Now, in order to know exactly the uh, axes at zero and the other values, we we'd better to add the grid. And finally, all these things should be shown in a window by this command of show. Now, let's run the code and see the result. Now, as we see here, we obtained these three curves, which describes the function and its two derivatives. Uh, in the do on the domain or over the domain minus one to one and as we see the curves are consistent with the idea of the first and second derivatives for example we see here at the maximum and the minimums of this uh, of the function the first derivative intersects with zero in example three we need to plot the first derivative of the given polynomial function here over the domain minus one to one by using the forward, backward, and central finite differences. Then we would compare the plots of the numerical methods with the theoretical one at the step sizes 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and 0 0.001. Uh, in order to solve this uh, example, we add the theoretical second derivative or first derivative sorry so lambda x so 0.5 now the first step size is 0.1 according to the uh, example in this example instead of using one plot uh, statement or function we will try to plot each uh, solution at a spot let's say so we can say for example here plot and let's say x the alpha of x this is the theoretical curve or the curve of the theoretical solution so uh, and let's make it a black continuous line now let's add the forward
differences. DFF1. Again, since we will calculate them once, so again, we don't have to give different names. But of course, if uh, in your solution or any uh, problem you want to solve and combine different methods, you can give different names as you like. Now let's plot so the difference dff1 and let's make it a blue continuous line. Now we add plot function again. X and df at one. And this time let's make it a red continuous line. Finally, and we'll make it a green continuous line. Now we don't need this plot. And now let's try to save a run code. Of course, before that, let's uh, modify the legend. So the first plot is the forward, the second is the backward finite differences, and we should add here the central. Now let's try running the code. And now, as you see here, at the step size 0.1, we have obvious large error. For example, Let's magnify the curve here at the top. So we'll see that we have significant error because the, the three curves of numerical method actually should coincide with the theoretical one because they represent the same values. But here, because of the... Uh, large magnitude of error, we notice that these curves are totally uh, separated, especially uh, at the maximum and minimum points. So now let's modify this uh, curve or this result uh, by getting or using smaller step size. Now let's try 0 0.01, run code. As you see here, there is a dramatic uh, improvement in the result. Now the, the curves are much, much closer to each other. Yes, we notice here that there's a small uh, differences and we can magnify at the top again in the same region and see the results. So as you see here, even after magnification, we notice that the amount of error is much, much smaller than the previous uh, step size. Now, let's try the third value of step size, which is 0 0.001. Now, this solution is almost perfect. And as we see here, the three curves are uh, completely uh, coincident are uh, covering each other. Let's try to magnify the same zone here. And we see almost they are perfectly uh, covering each other. Of course, the color is green because the last plotted curve is the CFD, 
which is green so that's why it's it's the, in the top of the three uh, other curves so in this way we obtain the solution uh, and we know we see here how edge affects the uh, accuracy in the three methods if you like this tutorial don't forget to give a like and subscribe for the coming videos thank you